All right, bluegrass rhythm guitar playing 101. Here are the do's and don'ts of bluegrass for a beginning bluegrass rhythm guitar player. A lot of people who come into bluegrass music come from folk or rock backgrounds. The way that the guitar is played in bluegrass music is different. The easiest way to figure out the difference is by directly comparing them. Two of the common strumming patterns that come from rock and folk music that don't work in bluegrass are this. So let's start with the don'ts of bluegrass rhythm guitar playing. This is a really common strumming pattern I hear with people who are coming from folk and rock backgrounds coming into bluegrass music. This is a common pattern. Another pattern I hear is this. Now, that might work really well in a rock or a folk setting because in those settings you might be playing with an electric guitar or a drummer, other loud instruments that can kind of compete with the volume decibel and the busyness of that playing. In bluegrass music we usually don't have electric guitar or drums, we're acoustic for the most part. As a result, we have to change the way that we play to accommodate those instruments. And so the fundamental strumming pattern for bluegrass music is very different from those two that you just heard. If you play those two strumming patterns that you just heard in a bluegrass jam, you're going to end up covering a lot of the instruments or even the vocals. Another aspect, of course, of bluegrass music is jamming informally without microphones. So it becomes really important the amount of volume or the amount of sonic space that your instrument is taking up. If you really want to hear the vocals or hear another instrument taking a solo in a jam setting, you really have to be in control of your volume. So the biggest sort of error in beginner bluegrass guitar players is using those strumming patterns which essentially take up too much space. Another way of thinking about it is just playing too busy. We'll talk about the, the strumming pattern that's more appropriate for bluegrass a little bit later, but here's a couple of other don'ts. We'll start with the don'ts of, of bluegrass guitar playing. Another common thing I hear is not using a capo. Often people associate using a capo with, you know, playing guitar on easy mode, sort of, right? Well, bluegrass music actually developed its sound from a lot of the open chord settings. Most bluegrass players are playing. 80% of the time out of G and C position, not just not because they're easy, but because they afford you the opportunity to play uh, open chords. So the resonance of the, the instrument when you have open strings is really important. Another thing I'll point out is that oftentimes these chords are played without thirds, so they're modified chords. Here's a G chord as most people play them. Okay, makes up, they're made up of the notes G, B, and D over and over again. Okay. G, B, and D in different in different patterns. All right. A bluegrass player is often going to play the G chord like this. And what is that doing? Well, we're getting we're turning this B into a D note, and so we're making that chord essentially less happy or less major. And this this B note here often is muted. All right. And then you get this sound of just G and D open. Really kind of strong, powerful sound. This allows the singer to sing either in a minor or major way. So they can sing in a more bluesy way or a kind of more chipper way. It also kind of gives that, affords those opportunities for the fiddle player and the mandolin to sort of interpret that. So that's one of the reasons that playing with a capo and maintaining the, the G position, even in, in, say, playing in the key of A or B, we get. Another thing, of course, is the bass lines. Bass lines are really important in bluegrass music. So you hear the G run a lot. Okay, works really well out of the G position, not so much with bar chords. Okay, also walking up. The bass lines are really important to the bluegrass groove. Walking up to the C chord. Bass lines are, have really become a part of the language of bluegrass music, and that's why, you know, playing out of G position, even if you're in the key of A or B, is preferred. If we're playing in the key of B with, without a capo, for example, we have these bar chords. It makes it a 
a little bit harder to do the bass lines. You can't really get rid of that third note. These, that could be a little, a little bit bright. Of course, we got the third in there as well. If we eliminate the ability to do some of these characteristic runs and sounds in bluegrass music. Also, the flat picking style of taking a solo is often done out of the open position. So that's the second don't. In review, we don't want to be too busy with our strumming. Or. Or. And also, we want to use the capo and try to maintain a G and C position when possible, for the most part, 80% of the time. Those are sorts of. Those are the sorts of things I find are most common in beginner players. Again, the, the, the most common one being the folk or rock strumming pattern. So now that we kind of know the don't, let's move on to the do. The basic groove of bluegrass music is a lot more sort of, I guess it's a lot less busy, I could say, maybe more precise in the basic strumming pattern. We have essentially what we can think of as boom chuck. Couple ways of thinking about it. Some people call it boom chuck boom chuck because that's the basic feel. You could think soft loud. So I'm doing a soft strum followed by a loud strum. That's kind of the basic groove. And if you're more advanced, you could do the alternating bass notes on a G chord. It's going to be the low G and then the open D string. adding more to the song to just do this. The bass player is going to play the boom, 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 boom. So that's going to provide more opportunities for the other instruments to be heard. You're going to be contributing more to the song if you do that as opposed to this. Or strumming pattern to learn just like if you're trying to learn a song that had one of those strumming patterns over the other one the basic bluegrass strumming pattern is going to be that boom chuck all right so we talked about the alternating bass that's a big part of bluegrass music and also the basic groove if you want to learn more about how we move from chord to chord with these moving bass lines video on that. There's a lot of kind of typical ways that bluegrass musicians will do that and those moving bass lines are a big part of what make bluegrass rhythm guitar playing fun and interesting to the ear. It also can help in a jam setting to, to predict the chord change, some of those, those bass line movements. Now, if you want to vary from the strumming pattern, of course, there's a couple of ways to do that. In general, I would caution, if unless you've sort of mastered that basic boom chuck, simple, precise kind of uh, strumming pattern, I would stick with that first. But once you're ready to move on, you can sort of think about it like a little drum fill in that at the end of every sort of section, you can add uh, a strumming pattern like this. Chuck, boom, chuck, boom, chuck, adaga, boom, chuck, boom, chuck, boom, chuck, ba da da. That's sort of our little drum fill per se. You can try that in each chord. Try it with me. G. C now. G. D. one way of varying from the strumming pattern. You don't 
Well, you could, if you stuck to just that, it would be all right. But again, if you bring that in, in too much, you're going to be covering up the sounds of other instruments. You also be want to be aware of your volume level in general, especially in a jam setting where there's no microphones. In a jam setting, it's going to be harder to hear the vocals, and some instruments are going to be quieter than others, so you want to adjust your volume based on that. Now, the guitar tends to be the most common instrument in a jam, so one thing you want to be aware of by constantly listening, but also looking around for social cues, is your own volume level, especially if there's two or three guitars, you're going to have to play a little bit softer than you're used to. In general, it's about serving your role in the song, which is very specific in bluegrass. The guitar has a very specific role. And if you stray from that role, it often takes away from the role that the fiddle or the banjo or the mandolin, they're all very specific. So if you remember these things, it'll really help uh, in your playing, it'll make the song feel much better, the groove of the song feel much better, and everybody will feel supported and heard. So in review, we want to avoid overplaying or over strumming. And not. All right. We want to avoid using bar chords and really focus on the magic that is these open shapes, sometimes without thirds, muting the thirds. we can It'll allow the singer to be a little bit more bluesy or the fiddle player to interpret in different ways um, that if, if we kind of have the uh, lots of thirds we tend to get a little bit more muddy a lot of times also that backbeat that I talked about the boom chuck is just the, the, the top strings or the skinnier strings of the guitar as opposed to the whole whole all the chords together or all the strings together which would be kind of a more muddy sound Is kind of supportive as right, so listen for that groove that sound there those are the things to avoid and then the things that you want to do are that basic boom chuck pattern some adding some alternating bass notes and also uh, you can vary from the pattern with just small little variations but always returning to that basic groove of boom chuck all right I hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching. Take care.